Ain't nothing nice. Check your blood. Nowadays I live my life on a day-to-day basis Cause everybody in the whole fam's got cases Roaming the streets that are full of the screw faces Resorting us back to the blocks on the staircases We hope we don't get to face the bases Who wanna try and race us to take the papers Later, lay what my whole cancer estate is Dwelling on the city on top of these skyscrapers Me, I keep a watch over the whole of my acres Your light. Get out of here. Once you're a lodge man, you're a lodge man for life. Though we are an amateur club, Mickey, you know, he put his heart and soul into the club. We've been under the arches now for. Uh, well, since 19, I think it was either 19, the late 40s, 1950 at the latest we've been there. Within the club, I am, don't laugh, a, so, supposedly a trainer. Uh, trainer and I am the youth officer. Come on, let's go, fellas. You've got to keep them ropes going, fellas. It's all part of it. You've got to learn. Come on, Mo. Keep them feet shoulder width. When you hook, there. Don't turn your head. Look there, there, turn. Looking at the target all the time, yeah? Six inches you can knock someone out, providing you turn your body. Don't... Let's go! Oi, what we stop for? Left leg forward, go! Left, right, left, right. No, you're stopping. Should be like that. Go! Come on, ten, nine... I always say, when the boys are training, it's not a youth club, it's a boxing club. The reason being, at a youth club, you stand about and chat. When you're training down here, you're training to box. And if you're not fit, it hurts. What's up, champ? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Well, you've got to remember, what do I keep telling you? This is a boxing club, yeah? Listen, don't you? So when you come to box, someone wants to punch you. But if you're like that, uh, you're going to get punched. Oh, do you still want to spar? Go on, on the bag. We'll do your gum shield in a minute. Come on. Come on, let's go, let's go! You get to know your fighters. Yes, you are a pal, but you've also got to be a school teacher if you like. You have got to be a disciplinarian. Oi! Start with the talking. Come away from there. Get over there. Get on that bag where I can see you. Work. You champ on that bag. Go. Come on, let's go. Hands up all the time. Come on the inside. You play football, you play rugby, you play cricket. You don't play boxing. Right, go to block my jab. Hands up. Now go to block my jab with that hand. Put them hands back like that. Go to block it. Bang. See what I mean? If you reach out too far, we'll hook you. So only ever just come to there. Just to there, yeah? Don't reach out too far, because they faint, then turn you. Right, go. Just your jabs. Come on, let's go. All right, let's go. Let's go. Work. Just the jab. Chin down, Junior. Go forward. Forward, Junior. No, where's your hand? What's it doing down there? Not be funny. We've got two weeks, you should be far better than this by now. It's there, back to there. There, not there. I don't want you getting smashed, do I? Come on in, let's do it. Do it what I'm telling you. Don't touch, gloves. Step forward. Get it back, Junior. Hands up, work forward. Don't talk, look at him. Both ways round, go the other way round. Right, time. Rest. Stay there. Mark is a senior trainer who boxed for the club, hard as nails. When Mick was about, he just told you what time to be there, and you was there. You didn't ask who you was boxing, you just turned up, and Mark was one of them. Always turned up, never let you down, always give 100%, and always willing to box. And then when he retired, he, he, he too became a trainer. The natural progression. Yeah, Mark, as soon as you throw as well, get your balance back. Don't stand still. Back on your balance. Hang time. Right, you're going to try this now. The person blocking is coming back to the counter. So the person throwing, this is where you have to reset yourself. If you don't reset yourselves, you're going to go, bomb, bang. There's a shot coming back straight away. And that's the scoring shot. 
You've scored, they've scored, so it makes it a bit even, yeah? Or you might miss, they score. So straight away you've done ya, yeah? Bomb. So you cover yourself straight away. Bomb. Move your feet, remember? Or a step to the side. Hands are up all the time. Basic things. Right, away you go. I remember the first time I, I came down here, I was like, walked up to these two, two doors. And uh, he's like, Narnia's wardrobe. I opened up the doors and I've come walking in. And it's just like, this gym all the way down there. And you smell, the smell's the first thing you can always, you always get when you come into a boxing gym. And I remember standing there looking, thinking, wow. You got a beer on time. You haven't even started. These have been here an hour. I think that I've been told, when you come into this gym, everybody's the same. No one's no different. Basically, no more, whatever, whatever colour you are, whatever religion you are. Another two rounds, Si. Si, do this to me, yeah? Four of these come out and skip, and then you go in the bag. It's a family to me, a big part of a uh, family. My missus would get the hump this, but it is. If I hadn't come here, then basically I wouldn't be where I am now, if you know what I mean. And it's, um, it's down to me. I remember walking down the aisle, walking to the ring, and, me, and the fella was already in the ring where I'm about to box. And the nearer I'm getting, the nearer I'm getting, the fella's getting bigger. And I remember looking at Mick. Mick looked at me, put his arm around my shoulder. I thought, here we go. There's going to be the speech now. He's going to give me that, the, you know, the speech. This is how to go into the battle, Grant. This is what I want you to do. He put his arm around my shoulder and said, I bet you wish you played table tennis. Do you know they say you can tell with people that they don't take no rubbish? They say with him, it's like a couple of times he used to say things to me and I'd look at him and go, and I'd think about it. As I normally, I'd go, who are you effing talking to, or something like that. But then, because he's, I'm doing something that I love doing, I don't want to get kicked out of the gym, so I'd have to sit there and go, ah, oh, right. Normally I'd have an argument with someone. Well, having an argument with someone would be, I'd rather have a fight with someone than use my brain. I've never really had a, a thing where someone talks to me and puts me in my place. I've never really had a, like a, a father figure either. So, um, coming down here, I don't know, I think I found, found a father figure in someone, and that was Mick. All right, you've got to try and do that, yeah? Do you want to be able to do it? Did you watch me? Did you watch me? Did you? You've got to try and do that now, yeah? No. No, you got to try. You get stuck. Right, now I want you to try this. Star jumps. Just move your feet. A lot of the kids nowadays, they, they find out they've got things like ADHD, can't concentrate. A lot of them are dyslexic now. And you get kids different backgrounds when they've been brought up. They haven't been brought up properly. And then the next thing you know, they're out getting in trouble, going to school, or getting picked on and things like that. They get sent to this, this school that I work with. I should be teaching them geography and history right now, but whilst they're out boxing, it made sense that I came down with them. We're a special needs school. We work with students who um, find it very difficult to work in a mainstream environment. A lot of the students behind us are on the autistic spectrum. We have some that are, have emotional and behavioural difficulties. Um, a lot of anger issues. Sometimes um, a word out of place from one of the students can send a student into a rage. Now what this is teaching the students is to be able to control that. You know, to listen to commands, to know, you know, when Mark says, I want you to do this, they know that that's what they're to do. Come on, this guy. No, back there. You're back there. I'm watching you. Come Keep on. going. The kids come up and they've got no fear of you. Nine. So you've got to try Seven. and... Um, so I've got no fear or no Five. respect for you. They've got Four. no respect for you. Four. And you've got to try and earn your respect Three. with them. Two. One and time. Come on, Josh, let's go. Move. <laughs> well, that's what happened to me. I was 16, got expelled from school, went to a unit. What's the way they all carried on? I knew half of them anyway, because I was bad myself, but I was bright. And I just sat there and went, 16, I went, sod this, I'm going to get a job. I'm going to go get a job. 
You turn, you turn, you turn, you turn. Yeah. Whereas they come down here and they, uh, they do respect the gym. They're binding kids, really. Hands up, though. Keep your hands up. Good. Stop. Boxing start straight away. Good. Now you're moving around again. Nice and light on your feet, on your toes. Stop. Good. Moving forward. Moving back. Moving around the other way. You push it. Push your weight forward. Good. This hand always stays up as you throw. Me and Mark Wargate running these sessions for Carnage Community. Specifically, we focus on disadvantaged young people, but we've had quite a few adults who have been in trouble with the police, maybe in and out of prison. They've said they've wanted to work with us as well. So boxing's around engaging them in something positive and constructive, and then we use it as a link to start doing some one-to-one -one stuff. Really, main aim really is to try and get them into paid employment. Boxing in particular, it, it gives them that opportunity to, to have a bit of release. It, it, it's, it's good for anger management and control because it teaches them control of emotions, control of, of, of aggression. We, we often get people saying, oh, well, you're, you're teaching criminals to fight. And we always say, well, no, we're not, they know how to fight. That's why they're getting in trouble. We're teaching them how to control themselves so they don't have to get into that sort of situation. We do find that the best way of getting young people out of a gang is getting them into another positive and constructive gang. They want to feel part of something, and that's what we're trying to open up. That's how I want you to box. I don't want you to box like this, but you're just going to move about, just touch your shoulder, working your distance out and working your balance out, and you're allowed to block with the backhand. All right, ready? <laughs> both attacking, both defending. Touch gloves, go. Put your hands down, hands down, that's it. You're aiming for the shoulder, good. <laughs> <laughs> Feet and balance. The trick is not to get caught. Don't get caught and don't get it. I've slowly brought people in. I mean, people that could be referred, some people that don't have anything to do themselves, some people that have got free time. I just brought them in and, um, yeah, it is a good gang. There's no swearing here. If you get punched in the face, you say sorry straight away or you've got a skill to block it. So, yeah, it's, it's very good. We've now, through Carney's community, trained up seven or eight other disadvantaged young people to deliver boxing fitness sessions, and we've got three of them who are getting paid work from us at the moment. And again, they've learned from Mark, who learned from Mick, and it's just continuing that cycle. I was hanging around with the wrong crowd, sitting on the street corners, getting into trouble and was getting arrested three, four times a week. And I just thought, what can I do? And I met a man called George Turner. He was my key worker. And then he um, took me, he said, how would I like to do some boxing? I went down on a Friday session down to Ellsfield, Mark and Mariah Gate ran it. And I just felt, you know, I fell in love with it. And then I just realized from after my first fight, I just thought I'm not, I can't be on the street no more. I just left all them lot, I left all my mates and that. I just didn't speak to them really no more. If I see them, I say hi and bye. And I can't be bothered to get back into there because it's just going to mess about in my career. And I want to go far. And Mark, I, I, can't, I can't put it into words what he's done for me. Seriously, he's helped me so big. Because starting from him and then him sending me, it's just changed my life around. People ask me that, why'd you do it? Well, it's the love of the game. And Mick did it for us, and it's like, I suppose they passed the baton on. The only time he, uh, he did uh, do me a bit was when, um, yeah, the only time he did do me a bit was when he rang my mum up, or my mum rang him up to say thank you for what he's done for me and all that. And he, uh, he made her cry. I used to tell my mum, I used to tell my mum what he thought of me, how I was as a person, and then because uh, my mum expected me to be in uh, get in trouble, get banged up, and be in prison. But somehow it's gone the other way.
truth is that I haven't shook my shadow And every day is trying to trick me into doing battle Calling out fake up, wanna get me rattled Wanna pull me back behind the fence with the cat Building your lenses, digging your trenches Put me on the front line, leave me with a dumb mind With no defenses, but your defenses If you can't stand to feel the pain, then you are senseless Since this, I've grown up some different kind of fight when the darkness come, let it inside you Your darkness is shining My darkness is shining Have faith in myself True The amount we've had through the doors over the years is, is phenomenal And they've all gone on Not so they all go on the box but you like to think it all instills something into them. And it, hopefully, while they're training, they're not up to noughties. It keeps them all on the straight and narrow. Oh, Mick, man. Where do I start? He's an amazing, amazing man. More than just boxing, he taught me a lot about how to be a man, you know? Respect, integrity, um, honesty, dedication, hard work. He taught me all of those basic principles that you need to go forward in life. I owe a lot to him. Yeah, life before Mick was um, very different. Before Mick, I'd get into, you know, got into a lot of trouble. I got stabbed a few times. If you can see there. One even hit my spine, hit my spine, bounced off it, and went 10 centimetres up my back. So um, they're the kind of things that used to happen before I got close with Mick. But after getting close with Mick, I wouldn't dare get involved in anything like that. <laughs> And he's that guy that when you'd see him in the morning, there'd be a conversation that you might need to have. Something's been happening, something's going on in your life, you've got a problem. And he'd have a way of getting that conversation out of you. You know, you'd be like, you'd feel like, how did I get talking about this? It's supposed to be something I was going to keep to myself, you know? And, you know, I'm, I'm telling you my, my private business. And he had a way of doing that, man. And he helped me so, so much. Mick Carney was a mentor before the word mentoring became fashionable. He would not only guide you into the skills of the, the noble art, the skills of pugilism, he would give you life skills. I asked him about whether I should get married, whether the girl I was gonna marry was the right person, whether when I joined the police service, whether that was the right thing, whether when I was gonna to go to the bar, whether that was the right thing. And even when I became a barrister, when I was uh, called to the bar, he came to that. He's been to all my christening of my boys, birthday parties. Mick was a member of my family. He was a proper legend. Everyone says it, and you probably heard it 101 times. You know, he was at my 30th birthday in his mid-70s on the dance floor and he was just made everyone at me. You know, I boxed blood, sweat and tears, boxed internationally with him in my corner and it was incredible. You couldn't, words won't express how that man made you feel. Oh, Mickey was massive. Mickey and Billy Webster as well, you know, Billy's best pads man I've ever had, you know, and when I moved down from Oxfordshire, um, you know, this became sort of my second family, as it were. Um, you know, I used to go back and do a little bit of training with my dad at his gym up in Oxfordshire. Um, and unfortunately, recently, my dad's passed away and, and my mum passed away as well. And then obviously Billy and Mickey as well. And I've had a bit of a rough sort of three or four years of things. But, you know, coming back down here, this is, like I say, this is my second family now. And uh, it's nice. I feel, I feel like you're, you know, you're part of something, you know. Just to come back down here again, do a little bit of training, see the fellas. You know, I, don't, I think I'll be down here till I'm like Tony there. Look, look, he's about 150. He still comes down here. He's great. Mick was a great man. He was a like a um, second father to me and my wife Jenny. And uh, he was Uncle Mick to my kids. Um, he was always smartly dressed, um, well mannered. You know, he led by example. He was the type of guy that everyone wanted to be like. Sometimes, if you'd, if you'd done something well, he'd just smile and walk away. And uh, if he didn't like um, what he was doing or he'd done something wrong on a bag, he'd just shake his head, he'd just walk away. He'd like you to think for yourself. He'd always think, what have I done wrong? And then you think, maybe as I was dropping my left hand, or maybe I should keep my chin down. He'd let you think for yourself. I miss him. Uh, 
every day of my life, you know. And you know, I work with a few fighters now, and uh, every time I go out with them, I always have his uh, his white handkerchief in my left pocket. One minute I was a nine-year-old coming in for something to do, and the next minute it just became kind of everything quite quick for me. Like I fell in love with the place, and I remember just wanting to get it out. I don't know what it is. To call it anger is too simple, you know? But whatever that thing is, that hole in the soul, that thing you want to get out, I wanted to get it out. And I think I found that when I came in here the first time as a nine-year-old, a way of getting it out. And then I think I found it the first time I walked into an acting class. And funny enough, the, the, the place I walked in to is Morley College, which is about 100 yards up the road. I wasn't my happiest when I was a kid in here, you know. I kind of lost my way when I stopped boxing. I, I, I got myself in a bit of trouble and, you know, um, not, not behaviour, not, you know, I, I drank heavily and stuff. And when I look back, a lot of the qualities that I, I look for in life now and the things that I use to pursue those, you know, whether it's prayer or meditation or work or... I had all of that in here without knowing it. And I was kind of ungrateful. I didn't know I had it. And I thought, I want more. I don't want to spend my life under a boxing arch, you know? I don't want to, I don't want to spend my life in here, you know, like, what? Day in, day out, turning up. And then you go to his funeral and you realise that, you know, it, it isn't that, you know? What he does in here therefore reaches life out there, you know, on a vast scale. I loved to fight as, as, as a kid. Uh, I was in trouble. My father was a, was a boxing coach, so it just seemed like the natural progression to do it. Basically, I mean, a couple of uh, friends told us about putting something here. Um, didn't think the fire service would let us, so we basically kidnapped our space and started put, doing a few sessions. And when we opened the door, it's just been an amazing, amazing time. We started doing one session a week, and now we're doing like 21 sessions a week, so it takes up a lot of time. So luckily, I'm, I'm, I've got a very, very, very accommodating wife and children who, who um, allow me to, to to carry on that, you know, carry on that legacy that makes us inspired. Get ready. Bruce Bulldog, go. One, two. <laughs> 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 time, time, time. Why are you coming in that top and I've got I've got television cameras here? Everyone thinks we're all United fans in here. We're not United fans in here. Whack! What are you sitting for? I'm not I'm older. Even though this is my gym, you know, I've run this gym, everything about this gym, just like Mickey around the fish while lodge. I'm still a lodge boy and it's that, that's how I feel and I will always I do everything I can to, to ensure that Mickey's legacy is sustained through what I do, through what I say, uh, how I am. I, I can feel myself morphing into him sometimes. Why are they gold plated trousers? He made me captain quite quickly after being there. And, and I was there for, for 10 years as captain. He went from being Mr. Carney when I first arrived to Mickey, and, and then that was it. Uh, and, and that's the start of something very, very, very dear to me. He's going to be a he's gonna be world champion while you're all doing bird. Let me tell you, this boy is going to be the best ever. And you hear the ear first, all right? Just between us, we're on 25%. Yeah, hell yeah! Where are you? Boom! Cheers, Kyle, oh, thank you. That's very kind of you. 25%. I don't need that much going on then. I don't need that much going on then. <laughs> Come on, Amber. Come on, Miss Ross, here, do it. Work hard, work hard. Come on. Good girl. Come on, boys. 
Say no, we'll get harder than this. It's going to get a lot harder. There's going to be someone in front of you trying to punch you in a minute. Come on. Change. Very good, very good, very good. Get back. Come on, John. Get in there. Get over there, come on. Now you can suck it up, Amber. OK, get on there. Hold on, boys. Hold on, Connor. All right? Yeah. Hold on. Good boy. It does attract, you know, a certain person, an aggressive kind of person. I suppose I am aggressive. I suppose we're all aggressive deep down. Anybody can hear that bag. I bet there's millions of people around the world who've got bags in the, in the garages and they think that they're rocky. They think that they're Floyd Mayweather. They're not. If you want to be, you've got to learn how to go in different angles and throw different shots, OK? So you're going in one way, you're going out, and you're trying to recommit. That's a two-phase attack. I can't do anything um, boxing-wise without the, 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 the shadow of Mickey Carney hanging over me, telling me to, to do more, to be better. Let's go nice and fast. No power, no power. Nice and fast. If you want to back with somebody else, just try and outwork them. Try and outwork them. Be faster, be better. Come on, Amber. I've got a great gym. And Mick would like that. Mick never came here, and that's one, one of my, my, my regrets that I never showed him. Even though he, he, he knew we were doing well, uh, he never came here. And I'd love for him to see, I'd love for him to see, it, see what, what we've made. Keep going, my one. Keep going, my one. Not good enough, my one. Not good enough. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner and also champion of Class A, 49 kilograms by TKO, is Farrell from the Red Car. That's it, stand up, let's go, let's get ready. Get in there and do your stuff, believe. All right, yeah? All right. Your time, keep it, boom. In here. This is all good. This is where we got it. This is where we got it. There's nothing new in. You, not him, can bring anything he wants. That's what happens if Khalid brings to it. That's what it's about, yeah? Come on, come on, yeah? Let's go. Boom. Double jab back on. Screw shot back on. Come on. Yes. Suck it up, yeah? Suck it up. Nice and tight, right off. That's it. Downstairs and over. Keep it tight, good lad. Drive, come on. Down. Jab down. Jab down. Good. Good. Listen. Go out there and drive him back. Keep standing, keep standing, yeah? You're getting lazy. I'm telling you, you're lazy there. That's one round you've just given away. You won the first round, you lost the second round. Go out there, one round, that's a one round fight. Do you understand? Yeah. Do you understand? Yes. So get out there, keep it tight, drive him back, okay? Don't go for the ending round one, go out there for three minutes. Go out there, get that jab. Stick downstairs, stick upstairs, push downstairs. Doom, doom, yeah? And then drive. Then drive. When you're there, you throw, okay? Swallow it, swallow it. Stand up. You're driving, you're driving by now. Don't be lazy now. Come on! That's it. Catch him down. Okay, son. Yeah. Proud. Thanks. Proud, good boy. All for the good. Everything that you've done, you learn from it. Yeah, you learn. You learn that this place when you were when you've lost is the emptiest place in the world. Before you box everyone's your mate, this is what it's about. Are you learning now? And you've got loads to learn, you've got loads to give, and I believe you'll do it. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah. He phoned me from the from the hospital to say that uh, nah, it's not good news, babe. I was uh, obviously Devastated and, and just got a train down there. Went round and I didn't know what to do because um, I had tears in my eyes and he, he was calling me a tart, I'd be a tart, Travis. 
I'm proud to have, to, to have been one of these boys. And um, I, I was proud to, um, to um, give his, uh, his eulogy and all that. It's true, you know, as far as I'm concerned, his, his legacy will, and I'll insist on it, um, live on with, um, with me and, and my Raigate and, and, and all the people who, who he's touched. Get out of here! <laughs> so busy, Trav. Got you something on the phone? I'm on the phone, I can't tell what's here. Eddie Lamb. Colour Sudbury. I heard about him. I heard about him. Khalil Bayan. Bayan, Bayan Khalil. Ezra McKenzie. Malachi Dixon. Ben Rossi. Eddie Lamb, uh, pro trader. Let me show you some of the pictures. Oh, all the pictures are gone. Where are the pictures gone? Eddie Moe! Eddie Moe! Gum shield, you got gum shield? Yeah, I'm ready. Ready? <laughs> ready? <Yeah. laughs> One time I come down, down here, Mick made you a nice cup of tea, and you come down with three cups. It was me, Mark, and Mick was drinking our tea, and looked at Koma, I see him start laughing at me. I didn't know, and then looked at Mick, and he gave me the dirtiest look and started shaking his head. I didn't know what I'd done. Looked at the cut in my hand and it said Mick on it. And it was him, it must have been him that switched him over, he set me up. And he was furious. Mark, where do you want to put this? Okay, put that on, please, boys. Don't, don't be scared of the, uh, the ghost, seriously. The ghost is not a problem, it's the rats will eat you. Oh, your blood's not still on there from the beatings that you got of me. No, but this is how it used to work. This is how it used to work. And it used to work like that. This way, it would do this. If I went out the ABAs and you were still in it, I would go, right, I'm giving it to you now. I'll give you over live him. Chilling out, shining the nice, they can smash you all tomorrow. Who <laughs> 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 you have a mic? 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Listen, see, see this. Yeah. <laughs> he needs, he, he, he needs a meal, and you could skip one. <laughs> Chef. Oh, yeah, mate. I'm Look good, man. I'm good, oh, good. Oh, good, mate. How's oh, everything? I'm great, man. Lovely job, then. It's gonna be a good day, mate. Well, I'm Fitzroy Lodge matchmaker. We're just going over the matches now. Just making sure all the bouts are all right and the weights all go so everything's safe and they're evenly matched. We've got two, two real bouts, two good um, competitive bouts that are going to have decisions, so they'll be judged properly. And then we've got four skills bouts, which um, they're no decision. Um, just getting the boys competing, but without trying to kill each other, practicing on their skills and technique. <laughs> So, um, and Nigel's lot had a sleep here last night, so they're bound to be a bit tired, bless them as well, but, but yeah, be all right. Do you want to kickstart at 12? Yes. I'm going to learn some tweet first, Arnie. Yeah, I'm going to tweet yeah. first. Yeah. Have a seat. All right. Boys, we're going to go, you're not going walking, we're going for some tweet first. Yeah? Make sure you stay together, we're going to go get some tweet first. OK, get some breakfast, some eggs. I found a dream that I could speak to, a dream that I can call my own. I found a thrill to press my cheek to, a thrill that I Fire in there. Fire in that belly, yeah? Okay? My fire in belly. You can do this, Ben. I know you can. Yeah? No blood. Don't be worried, that's all. But if I hear you, you're not sign. You think about it, right? You're in the most comfiest place ever. This is your gym, yeah? So you're going to be all right. You bring them up in there, right? Oh, Give me that. Good boy, Ben. Last night. Good job, Good luck. Good luck. Good boy, Ben. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Good job Good luck. Good luck. Good Good luck. Good 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 boy, you're nice and tight. You're nice and tight, OK. Ain't got to try and find this kid. Haven't got to look for this kid at all. He's going to walk straight on, yeah? Keep it tight as he comes, boom, boom. Understand? So, jab, can't jab going. Keep pacing that jab. As the kid keeps walking forward, he can't do anything else but walk forward. Jab, step back, boom. Understand? Just keep your straight punches. One, two, one. Yeah, just fight his face a bit. Close your eyes, close your eyes. Can you swallow your mouth or spit out? Does that feel okay? You feel alright? Good boy. Good lad. Straight shot, Sash. That's it. Now back your feet. Back your feet. Sash, come on, busy. Sash, you're not working enough. Yeah, stay there with that. Yeah, yeah, good boy, Ben, with that jab. Come on, where's he going? Score jab, good life. Good shot, very good shot. Stay there, Sash. Work. Go Cut on. Cut him off. Good boy, Ben. 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 Good boy, Ben.
Sash, keep going, keep punching. Work. Work, Sasha. Sash, you're back at him. Come on, work, Sash. You don't look fantastic, but we've had better days, yeah? Oh, you're right. Good boy, all right? Stand there with him. You don't need to be standing there with him. He wants to get there. Yeah? So as soon as he gets there, move your feet. Show it. Put that on the back. They're going to shout and scream everything. If you stand still, you're losing. If you move your feet, you're winning. Your choice. Winning. Of course. Of course. It's pretty beautiful. It's a one round fight. Brian Cleo can do this. I know he can. Go there, keep it tight. Boom, boom, move. Boom, boom, move. As soon as you stand in, you start a big shot. They're going, hey! Don't need it, okay? I'm a shot in my end. That's lovely shots, yes! I'm very good. Very good. Nice good. Stay with him, Callum. Come on, yes, yes. Boom, boom, good boy. Well done, hey, come here, beautiful. All right. Now, I'm second in. Well done, fantastic. How do you feel? Good. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Now, fantastic. Fantastic fight. In the blue corner, Boo. Callum. Boo. Well done, Matthew. Well done. Please show your friends down to the Callum Miles. Boo. 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 Fantastic. Don't whatever you do, I'm telling you, do not get down by it. Do not get down by it, because it's absolutely brilliant. I mean it, seriously. Absolutely fantastic. That's why you're here. You're here to learn and you're learning. It's, ma it's massive. You, you've gone from there to there. Yeah, other kids go from there, 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 there. I don't even get there. Yeah. And you wanted to win today. We want to win all the time. Just don't worry, listen. So you did yourself proud, yeah? And the club proud, and Mickey. Alright? 
Yeah. Yeah. Go and get chunks. He was able to step out. It's quite good, really. He brought all the old kit down. He's got a drill. Don't drill. Well, don't cut him. That's terrific. Nice one. Well done. First of all, obviously, I'm going to thank everyone for coming on a Sunday. It's maybe short notice for you, but it's been quite a long time in the planning since 2011, since obviously we, uh, we had a terrible year. So the Carney Cup. The inception of it was just, just talking about it. We wanted to do something fitting to honour and to doff our cap to a, a, as far as I'm concerned, and I'm sure most of you, a legend. It's fitting that it's here, under the arches, where everything happened, where it all took place, where everything was started. This is the place that hopefully keeps us all together and binds us all as a family. I can't mention the Carney Cup, as this is. I can't mention Mickey Carney without acknowledging the greatest padsman ever and one of the greatest coaches I've ever seen, Billy Webster. So, as far as I'm concerned, they come together. But the uh, axis of it all went round Mickey Carney. Mickey Carney is the common denominator in everyone in this room's life, and for that, I'm truly and eternally grateful for that and for your friendships. We are, whether you're boys or girls, we are Lodge Boys and we are family. So thank you and God bless. There you go. Only time will tell. Right then.